I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Hotel Mars, episode N. Gordon Chang of Forbes.com is here with me because we're not only headed to the moon, we're headed to the moon watching China launch a probe for the moon. And not an ordinary probe either. This is a probe that recapitulates the success of NASA and to a certain extent the Russian space program in the 20th century into the 21st. We're of course joined by my colleague and co-host David Livingston of The Space Show. David, good evening to you. Good evening to you, John. They are called Taikonauts, I believe, not astronauts, but there is is no, correct. there's no one on board this launch except for a bot. I wonder if the Chinese bots have some particular name like Taikonaut Tets or something, Gordon. Are they, are, are they as taken with their bots in China as we are here? Do they have a little R2-D2 we could call she or something like that? And you know what's even worse, John? It's basically an American that has been painted over with red and yellow of the Chinese flag. Now, Gordon, you're, you're getting ahead of the story. We welcome Paul Spudis of the Lunar and Planetary Institute. Gor- uh, Paul, a very good evening to you. Gordon's uh, re- referring, of course, to what drawings we have or what photographs we have of Chang'e, the lunar lander and moon rover, are surprisingly similar to the NASA efforts of these last years. Paul, good evening. The Chinese, are they looking to reproduce the American space effort in a, a kind of a, 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 a way that you would admire a competitor? Good evening to you, Paul. Well, good evening. I, I don't think it's so much that as it is that you need a certain design to successfully travel across planetary surfaces. So the reason the rover looks the same is because these are the kinds of machines that are needed to do the jobs we want to do there. David? Uh, Good evening, Paul. Uh, I'm curious uh, to know if you think that if this is successful for China, could it possibly spark a competitive thing here with our space program and, and maybe get us to start really aggressively thinking about returning to the moon? I'd, I'd like to see that. I mean, I would like to hope that it would inspire us to return to the moon because I, I, I certainly am encouraged that, that there's more and more interest in the moon. What bothers me is that all that interest seems to be by every country in the world except the United States. And uh, it turns out that uh, I think the moon is extremely important in terms of creating spacefaring capability, and it pains me to see us not participate in this effort. The estimate right now is a December 1st launch, but that's not hard, and it's headed to a part of the moon called the Bay of Rainbows. Go ahead, Gordon. First of all, John, I want to make clear that this robot was not named after me. Right. Chang, thing. It's Chang E, Chang 3, yes, of course. All right, Gordon, okay. please. Okay, Paul. Um, Apparently, the Chinese space program ran a competition to design this rover, and a number of people came up with designs in China. And what has happened is all of those teams were really disappointed because none of the uh, designs were accepted. What they decided to do is come up with something that looks like NASA's Curiosity, which is now on Mars. And a lot of Chinese scientists are really PO'd about this because they say, why do you even bother asking us if all you're going to do is copy what the U.S. did? Well, that, that's an interesting story. It is not one that I've heard. But I, I will say that, that you know, it's not that easy to design a robot that will successfully travel long distances across the moon. It's a granular surface. It's, it, the, it, the dust can be soft in places. You need to very carefully think out your design. I believe this one looks the way it does because it not only resembles the American Mirror, the Mars Exploration Rovers, it's also very similar to the Soviet Lunokhod Rovers of the 1970s. So it, it, there is some heritage there, and in space flight, heritage is always an important consideration when you're picking a design. Uh, The people in the back of the room in my studio, Paul and Gordon and David, are raising their hands. These are the shadowy figures that sit in on every show, saying, please, John, remind people that the reason the Chinese lander and rover resemble Russian and American plans is is at least raise the suspicion that it's because they were stolen plans. All right, just mention that I have now. My paranoid crowd is satisfied. We'll go back to the case at hand. Gordon, this jealousy, does it come from the nationalism that 
fires everything else? Is that what's happening here? Well, I think what's happening here is that the Chinese want to use proven technology. So what they did was they took Soviet wheels and they put uh, basically the curiosity on top of them. Right. And they said, look, this is going to work. We know it's going to work because it has worked. Right. And, and that's what the Chinese are doing. The Chinese point out something very interesting, and that is they never fail in space. Well, they never fail in space because what they're using, as you suggest, is everybody else's technology, which they have, of course, stolen, John. Let me push you on this, Paul, to your information, because it isn't transparent. It is a Chinese communist dictatorship, for heaven's sakes. What is their ambition for this mission? Are they are they pushing into ground that the Americans and the Russians have not cap, uh, traveled? We have orbiters at the moon right now. So where are they going? Well, it, it's, it's interesting when you look at the actual configuration of the lander. The lander can apparently uh, put down about 1.5 tons of payload onto the lunar surface, and yet the rover they're sending is only about 120 kilograms, about one-tenth of the capacity. Now, what that suggests to me is that this lander is the first, the prototype, of a series of landers. And my suspicion is is that they're going to use this lander hardware to land a, a variety of different payloads on the moon, up to and including sample return vehicles and possibly other robots that might actually start doing uh, useful tasks on the moon. David? Uh, Paul, do we know what this lander is specifically going to do when it lands? Not in great detail. You can tell a little bit by, by the, uh, the, the published instrument payload. It's going to measure the surface chemistry. It's going to take color pictures. It's going to try to determine the composition of the soil, the physical nature of it. And the rover is going to go on a traverse of probably of several kilometers at least, examining the terrain, sampling the soil, and, and, and looking for specific uh, compositional clues to the origin of, of this part of the moon. So it, it's a fairly comprehensive scientific exploration of uh, this particular landing site. Paul, what you say is very interesting about their uh, ability to put more payload on the moon. Often on this show, we have a guest named Rick Fisher. And, and Rick talks about how the Chinese military wants to use the moon for military purposes. And I suspect that if Rick were here right now, he would be saying that essentially they're going to be putting missiles up there or right. something um, to surveil, uh, for instance, American satellites. And you underline a fact. We need to reestablish it here, Gordon. The Chinese space program is entirely military, which is why Absolutely. they do not participate in the ISS. Absolutely. And, and it's just a military program. And even though they say they're interested in science, Science, the Chinese military is always lurking in the background, even with their civilian scientists who are attached to the military. And this is an important fact that we've got to remember when we think of cooperating with the Chinese, as we did with this exoplanet thing at the Kepler conference. We are being taken to the cleaners. Or stolen from, simple. Uh, Paul, I want to press again, because you mentioned the payload, and they're not delivering a big enough payload. But is there anything new here? In other words, is there any science going on, or is, is this just a demonstration or an aggrandizement uh, supranationalism? Well, I, I think there is some new science, but, but fundamentally it's more of the demonstration and development of a capability. There, yes, it's, it's true that there have been other rovers landed on the moon that have explored it. They haven't been to this site, so anytime you go to a new place on the moon, you're doing new exploration. But in the, in the case of Chang'e 3, I think their principal objective is to develop and demonstrate the capability to put fairly large payloads down on the moon. So the first time they try it will be this mission, and if it succeeds, a lot of other potential missions uh, are, are possible. David, I have a question for you, because it, the space show, you talked to a variety of the of the talking heads of the NASA, old, old NASA, new NASA. Is there envy? Is there admiration? Is there puzzlement? Or is there indifference in the community towards this launch, David? Um, I, I think the official word that I hear is that it'd probably be closer to indifference. We wish them well. We hope it's successful. And they don't feel any competitive pressure or any threat. And uh, everybody hugs with each other and let's make peace. And, you know, we shouldn't have any... Uh, 
trepidations about doing anything with China, and this will be great for space for everybody. That's kind of the overwhelming thing I hear, although I do hear people talk, as Gordon does, and I do hear people talk about the science, and I, and I have a lot of independent people that are guests that will raise questions about the fact that it's Chinese military, and we really you know, need to be a lot more sophisticated about what we're doing. Um, uh, Paul, I'm going to push you on this. This is a military program, right? There's not transparency in this. Does that make a difference for you, Paul, uh, given your work? Well, it, 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 it does in the sense that it's not quite the same as, as, as missions that you deal with with other countries. Uh, I participated in international missions. I actually had an experiment on the Indian mission to the moon a few years ago. But uh, I, I think that, in fact, what concerns me more about the Chinese program is not that they're doing it and not even that it's their military that's doing it. It's the fact that we're not doing it. It, it, it's, it's not so much that they're going to the moon, it's more a problem that we are not going to the moon. And, and any time you do that, you basically, when you cede the field of competition to someone else, then you end up playing by their rules in the end. Absolutely, Paul. I couldn't agree with you more because I think that we need to understand that the United States, even though we've been to the moon, as you say, there's a lot there that we don't know about. and We should be there doing the scientific experiments along with everybody else. The, Amen to that. The launch is December 1st, and we're talking about five days out, putting it on the surface of the moon. And, Paul, do we have a sense of how long the mission is? Could this go for weeks if they got a nuclear engine on board so they can run like curiosity and it could die? dominate news for years? Uh, my understanding is that the lander has a nuclear power source, so it's designed to survive the lunar night. Right. The rover apparently is entirely battery powered. Now, I don't know if it can hibernate and survive the first lunar night or not. On the moon, the nights are 14 days long. It's a very long period of time. It's extremely cold. It's difficult to survive solely on battery power. So I, at least the lander should be a multi-month mission. It's not so clear what the rover is going to do yet. Gordon, did you hear talk of this in Hong Kong? Were they watching? The, you know how they'll roll this out with great spectacular fanfare after it works. So was there any sense of it? No, there isn't. But after every successful Chinese space launch, right. they bring the Taikonauts into Hong Kong. Right. They fly the flag, literally, and they say, this is their motherland at work. Uh, David, because, again, you talk to the old gang and the new gang, uh, there's envy, as Paul mentions, everybody who likes to be going along. But what about the military aspect, David? Does anybody mention that anymore, that we're not dealing with civilian efforts here? We're dealing with aggression. Um, uh, if it's mentioned at all, it's by independence, and uh, they're considered grossly politically incorrect for right. bringing it up. Right. The party line that I tip... I'm flattered, here, by the way. I am absolutely flattered by what you said. Yeah, sorry. Okay, I, I, the, I will control him here. He's, you he's, know, the, yes, the no. party line that what I typically hear is, right. we're not in a space race, uh, there's not a threat, we, you know, and it's all hugs and kisses. And uh, what they think to themselves when I speak to them at conferences and stuff, it's usually not that way. But the public comments that I hear for the most part on the show are pretty uh, they just blow it off as being military very few will will stand up with a lot of courage and say this is a problem for us and most agree with Paul in fact I'd say 90% agree with Paul as do I that the real issue here is that we're seeding the moon, the moon and some of our space program to others and to others who do not believe in a Western approach to democracy and capitalism and things like that. And it's a big mistake for the United States that we will pay dearly for. David Livingston, Dr. Space at the Space Show, Paul Spudis at Lunar and Planetary Institute, watching the skies. The launch is scheduled December 1st. I mentioned that there's a contest, and I don't know the winner right now, a contest for the name of the rover. The leading candidate for name is U2. Jade Rabbit is what it means. And U2 is a white rabbit, pet rabbit, accompanying the goddess Chang'e on the moon in a popular ancient Chinese myth. The Chinese go to the moon. Gordon Chang of Forbes.com. I'm John Batchelor.